John here guys and today we're talking about the DJI FPV system version 2 that's because this morning we all woke up to some leaked photos of the new system that's right and that means that the DJI FPV system version 2 is most likely right around the corner so will we see it on the market ready to grab up and go into our Christmas stockings this year um, because we're not likely to have a PlayStation 5 in there that's for sure so let's first go over what the three leaked images are what they mean and how this is all going to play out over the next few weeks or months as this system comes out. Now this confirms some information that a lot of us have heard over the Black Friday sales that were popping off in the FPV sales alerts group. Um, there were some big sales on the DJI FPV goggles. Well, um, certain shops like Newbie Drone ended up having to cancel those orders. People were upset. It wasn't really the fault of them. There was a bug in their system that allowed the sale to go through, but part of why it was getting refunded uh, to the people that bought that sale were the fact that we now know through Bardwell's stream last night that the DJI FPV goggle V1, this set of goggles right here, the SKU is now no longer being manufactured. This goggle is no longer being manufactured. That would mean it should be making way for a version two, uh, which is the most logical conclusion. So people could not even fulfill those orders even if they wanted to. So give Newbie Jordan and everybody else that had that issue some slack. They can't fulfill them because they're not going to be getting stock. Hopefully the V2 goggle is around the corner and that's what that all means. So we see in here a couple of different things. One, it looks like the underside or the top side of the drone itself. We have one that has the drone and the goggles in a box and we have one box cover art photo that shows the combo together. Now, as we look at this drone, it doesn't look like your typical FPV racing drone. Now, this is my America HD. This is the racing drone that I built up that has the Cadex Vista DJI unit inside. I fly this with those DJI goggles. Um, it is an amazing uh, combination that allows me to go super fast on the race course and still see in a digital view. So will the version two also mean that we get a new air unit? Are they still gonna continue with that partnership with Cadex? Um, honestly, the Vista was the better option as far as units for a lot of our quads. And the reason for that is that it is lighter, smaller, and cheaper. They both utilize the same DJI camera, which is the best camera for that system on the market. Other companies have tried Runcam to make one. Um, the Nebula has come out that it was made by Cadex. Neither one of those offerings were nearly on par. Um, so will we see an increase in features? The goggle that they're showing in this picture does still seem to be the version one goggle, but does it have some other upgraded elements? So are they gonna go the way that Fat Shark has always done and just release essentially the same case with features that are different inside? Now, two of the main features that people want are OLED screens. That's right, OLED screens for these goggles. Fat Shark, the last two models, the HDO and HDO2, and the Orca goggles and the Skyzone 04X all have OLED screens. Now the screens on the DJI goggles are actually a bit bigger, but they're lower quality screens, which is kind of a weird um, situation going on because the camera feed on this is so, so good, but the screens themselves are not as high of a quality. Um, so you get that weird effect to where, man, if you could have an OLED screen, <laughs> People always say this, if you could see the DJI image in a pair of Fat Shark goggles, oh man, what would that be like? So will we have an upgraded screen on the V2? Um, I don't know if the picture that we're looking at is the V2. I don't know if they're really gonna just abandon FPV as we know it today and just try to push their own product forward and get people to buy that. I hope that's not the case. I hope that we've shown a strong enough market interest to the where they will develop a V2 that is still compatible with all these other accessories. I don't see why they wouldn't, but then again, our market is so small. FPV is so small compared to the consumer drone um, types of deals that DJI is probably used to doing. They're not probably used to dealing with markets that are as small as this one. So I'm hoping that that means that they're still going to release a V2 that supports all of these features, or at the very least continue 
to manufacture this. The other main feature that people want is an HDMI out. That is a port that you can plug an HDMI cable to and see the goggle feed. That's one of the major gripes in FPV racing. You have to be able to spectate the FPV feed from the drone to ensure that people are correctly going through the obstacles. That's one of the requirements today for FPV racing and one of the things that's holding DJI back. So if they had an HDMI output, they could run that goggle feed you know, not just to your eyeballs, but also to a screen to allow people to spectate. That would also open the door up for some other accessories to be able to allow people to view. There's certain people, you know, especially that have a budget that have bought two pairs of goggles just so somebody could ride along. Um, so if they have that HDMI output, boom, you just run out to an external screen that could be much, much cheaper than a second set of goggles and you're off on the races. Next in the photo is a DJI version 2 radio. This is the version 1 remote. Um, it looks kind of like an Inspire remote. I'm guessing they may have even used some of the same tooling and casing and probably the same battery, maybe even the same gimbals for this radio, but they have departed from the shape. When, this is a Crossfire TBS Tango 2 radio and it's much closer to the shape of this. Um, I've compared this to an Xbox controller. It's very, very similar to an Xbox One controller in terms of size. I actually feel like this is a lot more ergonomic and so they're going with that form factor for their radio option. Now, there are some questions still. Is it gonna use DJI's control link? Are they gonna branch out to a 900 megahertz control link? Like, are they increasing the control, the control length of DJI radio or they're just adjusting the form factor. I think that DJI is really positioning themselves. This is part of a multi-part plan to bring some of their larger customer base into FPV. We've seen that over the years. And the DJI um, market seems to not necessarily be the FPV hobbyists of today. They are the camera drone enthusiasts of today. They want to be able to pull them over and introduce them to FPV through their system. Now, the, why do they care about those customers more than the FPV hobbyists? Well, DJI um, camera drone enthusiasts tend to probably have a bit more budget to spend at once. You know, I think if you looked at the two spending um, habits over like a 12 or 18 month period, they may be similar. In fact, an FPV hobbyist in some cases is probably gonna spend more, but they do it slower gradually you know 50 bucks here 25 bucks here a lot of times the fpv hobbyist doesn't have 1500 or 2000 dollars to just plop down and get into the system so how much would this thing potentially cost we know that the goggles already are going to be five to six hundred dollars the price point today is 529 for the v1 the radio price of this is $300. I'm guessing it's probably gonna be about the same. So that would be $830 just for the control system and the FPV system. So how much would the drone cost? Um, the cheapest drone right now in DJI Stable is the Mini 2 that has just been released at $449. I can see a price point somewhere around there. I'm thinking four dollars to $500. So that brings your total cost of this combo is gonna be somewhere between $1,200 and $1,500. Now, because this new introduced FPV drone, you can look at it here as a clear shell it looks to have some sort of a heat sink that's probably above an esc in there and has some motors that are pretty well protective i can't tell exactly what size these motors are but they look like they might be on the smaller size it's really hard to tell scale we know that the shaft in there if they're using a traditional prop shaft is an m5 shaft so that's the one thing that we can kind of scale the size on so i don't know if this is like a a 2205 motor or a 2207 motor it might be a smaller 1806 motor um, so what kind of power and speed are we going to get there is an interesting image on the box art that shows kind of a camera on top so are they going to have a camera that has an adjustable two-way gimbal to be able to adjust um, some companies have tried to do that in the past where they adjust either the arm motor mounts or they adjust the camera one way or the other. And the reason they do that is in FPV, you can see in this drone, my camera angle is like that. Well, why is that? Well, my camera's flat, my drone is flying like this. And the thrust vector of this is going to be straight up from the props. So if I wanna go maximum speed, I wanna tilt my quad so that my thrust is more angled forward right and but the thing is you don't want to angle it all the way up like this because then you have no upward lift and you're just going to go really fast into the ground so that's why you need to angle most racers kind of race around 45 to 50 degree angle these days 
Um, so maybe that's something that will allow you to adjust the angle as you tilt pitch. That's kind of a new feature. I don't think, I don't think many FPV enthusiasts are going to be interested in a feature like that, but people coming from camera drones, it'll be a much easier transition. They're probably putting in, cooking in some um, auto level features into this drone. Are they going to allow full acro? Um, what are some other things that might uh, impact the pricing versus the Mini 2? I'm guessing if it's an FPV drone, will it have all of DJI's um, GPS features and things like that that will allow it to hover in place and hold? Um, one of the things about FPV drone flying where you're looking through the goggles flying is that we crash a lot. So this does look a lot tougher than your average um, FPV drone, but there's still things that are gonna break. How are they gonna handle that? Are they gonna make the case where it's easy to access and do repairs. I just don't see how this is going to work. Right now, there are some capabilities of people that have figured out how to repair like a Mavic Mini, like the old one, or maybe a Mavic. People can swap an arm, swap a motor, but it's probably not um, gonna be something the average camera drone enthusiast is going to be able to do. The hobby people can do it. So is this meant to be crashed a million times? It doesn't look like it. I can't see a drone like this on an actual race course. I also don't really see a drone like this being um, something that you would grab cinema footage with because there's not really a place that you can strap a GoPro on. This is a, this is a five inch freestyle drone. As you can see, it has a GoPro mount directly on top where I can mount my GoPro Hero 9 to get some really nice footage because even the DJI system is 720p or 1080 if you're recording straight to the DJI Air unit, that footage is not going to hold up compared to what you're gonna get from a GoPro or Insta360 camera. So it's not really for that type of film gathering enthusiasts either so who would this be for that's who it's for guys it's for the camera enthusiast the camera drone enthusiast who wants to dip their toe into fpv is this a gateway drug that is going to get them into their fpv ecosystem and buy more catex vistas buy more air units or are they departing away from that and going to start building up their own cash their own stable of fpv drones i didn't really see um when DJI entered this market, it didn't go with how they run their business. Their business is to release a new drone every 12 to 18 months in different categories. They have the Mavic Mini line, which is now the Mavic 2. They have the Mavic Air. They have the Inspire. They have the Phantoms. They release a new one every 12 to 18 months. You would, if you're into that, you would buy another one, you buy another one, you buy another one. With their FPV system, they're only getting one sale of the goggles, one sale of the radio, and then sell of these individual units, but the bulk of the cost, or at least half of the cost, is going to other manufacturers. If I had DJI on this quad, um, the frame, the motors, the receiver system, the flight controller, the electronic speed controller, those are all things I'm spending at other companies, not DJI. So is their goal to kind of use us as guinea pigs, like MC's creation said on Facebook, um, is it to use us as guinea pigs to test the system in order to do, release their real plan, which is to do that, we'll find out very soon. If it does come out for Christmas, leave me in the comments, are you going to buy one? Um, if it comes out in time for Valentine's Day, are you going to skip that tennis bracelet you were going to shop for your wife for and get one of these instead for yourself? What are you guys going to do? If it comes out, I'm going to be getting it. I wish I was on the testing list. DJI is probably one of the only companies I would actually test for. It's just not my thing, um, but I do want to get my hands on that system. I hope it has the OLED screens. That's the screen that I want to look for. So what are the features that you really want in a DJI FPV version two? Thanks guys.